Happy Sabbath, everybody. You gotta lend your voices to the Lord, all right? Just sing as loud as you can, as if you were the only person in the room today. Amen? Amen? I want us to sing. Shall we all stand, please? Stand with us, please. Our call to worship this morning comes to us from Psalms 29, verses 1 and 2. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The church is called to worship. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, the task is mine and the opportunity to welcome us all today to church. To our regular members, we say it's nice to have you. But to, like Kyle, Sister Hannah, and we're, we're really, really happy to see you. We, we hope that you have a blessed Sabbath and that you feel the love and the warmth in worshiping with us today. Happy Sabbath. We'll now sing our welcome song. Oh, 
Monday and then fly back on Wednesday. Then I had to go up to Palm Beach on Thursday. I had to come back to Overtown on Friday, and I'm still here. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? This little old me, one that doesn't drive and not supposed to drive, God took me up and brought me down. I had a driver, then I didn't have a driver. And I had a pilot, took me up and brought me down. I'm talking about the Lord was my pilot. Amen. You all thought I was talking about the other guy. But see, I was up in the clouds and I looked out and I said, what a mighty God we serve. I looked at those heavy duty wings and I'm trying to figure out how do they stay up in the clouds like that? But God gave the knowledge to man. And guess what? Daniel is correct. Men are moving to and fro because the way that the Spirit of God has worked in our world and he's still in control. Still in control. Even though he's let man think he's in control. But God is in control. Can you say amen? amen. If you don't believe that, then watch out now. He's going to bring you down, lay you down on the bed of affliction sometimes. So you look up and see that there's a God taking care of you. I know that he's put me down a number of times. I've had to, uh, uh, what you say, humble myself. And understand that there is a God like Nebuchadnezzar. Don't care how far you go up. You can easily come down if you go up. And God is the one keeping you up. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Today we want to remind you of our many opportunities for prayer. Prayer is power. No prayer, no power. So we want to encourage you early in the morning. Remember Jesus used to get up. And pray, and he used to get up so early, the poor disciples were fast asleep. Don't be like those disciples of old. We're disciples too, but we need to get up at 4.30. I'm talking to me too, because sometimes I don't get up when I'm supposed to, and I lay back down. But guess what? There's another uh, uh, telephone this time. The 4.30 is on Zoom, but 6 o'clock, if you miss the 4.30. I have to get up at 5 to 6. So praise the Lord. All year long, I've been able to get up Amen. at 5 to 6. So I may miss the 4.30, but I, I get, by the grace of God, to 6 o'clock, right? Elder Walker and Elder Hannah, we get on, and Elder Dia, she's such a faithful person doing the devotion for us. So we want to let you know. And then at 12 noon, we remember I always say and remind you of that song. Whisper a prayer where? In the morning. Whisper a prayer what? At noon. Whisper a prayer where? So keep your heart what? Only a couple of people are tuned up, all right? So pay attention. You got time to pray. And then you have the women at 7 o'clock Thursday, Bible study at 7 Friday, and there are other chances to pray. Push Tuesday all day long. We also have the end of Tuesday. We got some other stuff going on. And then the normal, when I say normal, prayer collective meeting on Wednesday night on Zoom, just like any other church. But guess what? We're doing a little bit extra. Why? Not because we uh, want to do this. It's because we need to do that. Notice what I said. We need to do that. And we pray for one another and each other. We want to also... Uh, let you know the pastor is, as usual, preaching somewhere. And uh, we want to uh, pray for him also. But one of our elders, Elder Palmer, uh, is, uh, is, uh, has death in the family. And we want to lift up uh, the young family, and especially Sister Palmer, as she, as some of us and all of us, have endured that particular situation. It's a situation that stays with you for all, all the time. My father died in 2009, as I told you. I still miss him. I still think about him, especially on holidays and Thanksgiving. And he used to sit at the head of the table. And I'm sure you have family members like Ella Walker, the same thing. Holidays are tough for a lot of people without home. But we have the blessed hope. And that is my hope that... One day soon, I'll be able to see my father sitting at that uh, front of that head table again. Jesus is in the head of the head table, but I want to be able to see my father somewhere around the table. I don't really care. I just want to be at the table while he's there. Can you say amen? amen. 
All right, you got to wake up. The, we, the pastor wants us to have a report from the nominating committee and our first elder, used to be. But he, he's my first elder. He'll always be my first elder, no matter whether you give him the title or not. We have known each other a long time. I won't say how long, because his wife is sitting out there. I get in trouble. All right, uh, Ella Hannah, who has the record. Let me just say again that our procedure, based on the Manual of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, when the report comes, you hear the name. If you have a problem with a name, we are not asking you to stand up and call the name. We are a loving church. Can you say amen? amen. We do not embarrass anybody in public. Can you say amen? amen? So the procedure is, all you have to do is to you raise your hand or just say, I would like the report to be returned to the nominating committee. I know that's a lot of words. All you have to say is maybe two words. Please return, or three words. Please return the report to the nominating committee. That's all you have to, that's all you have to say. <laughs> but no argument, no whatever, and uh, we will make, the, they will make an appointment. I'm not on the committee to meet with you about the concerns and uh, bring it back to the church. Uh, I believe there is business meeting tonight. It's still going on, still planned. Yes. Business meeting at sundown. We've been told about that, so mark it down. We need all of our members to be here to discuss God's business. We can't usually discuss business in a sacred service, so you got to come and find out about the financial picture and some other business things. So we look forward to seeing you at sundown. Uh, Ella Hannah, if you give us the report, the first reading and the names will be placed in the lobby. You'll have a week or so to look at the names. And then when the pastor comes, he will have the second reading. And then you will be given a chance to vote on the names. All right, Ella Hanna, represent the nominating committee. By default. Um, By default. <laughs> Brother Kyle, great to see you. Right, likewise. Um, the uh, nominating committee met. Um, Albeit, uh, Raza. It's off. It's on. No, it's on. Now we hear you. Rather, rather late, but uh, we're we're trying to get it done. And uh, the following names were selected to serve as officers for the coming year, 2024, and. Also, 2025. So when, when, you, when you vote this report, understand that you're voting um, for the officers for two years, not one year. Now, as usual, if you come to the end of the year and you, and, and you, don't want, and you wish to continue for the second year, you can always opt out at the end of the year. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Hopefully, nobody will opt out, and we'll have our list of officers for 2024 and 2025. The names are as follows. Elders, Dr. Gerson Diaz, uh, he is, and he's also going to be the first elder. Amen. Elder Sharon Palmer is being returned, Elder Melford Walker being returned, Elder Carl Davis being returned, Anne Marie Wellington is being added, Sister Druslyn Hines being added, uh, Dr. David McCalla being returned, uh, Elder Roy Del Wedderburn being returned, Elder Raymond Bennett being returned. Deacons, Brother Michael Mangaroo, also the head deacon, Alex Henry, Ryan Wedderburn, Medley Hines, Howard Sutherland, George Foster, Stephen Barrett, Rupert Rowe, Joshua Duvert, Linkoy Jason, Ian Henry. Church Clerk, Sister Maureen Gordon, Nadia Henry, Cheryl Morgan. Treasurer, Sister Diane Edwards as the head, Brother Mac Michael Mangaroo, Sister Donetta Wright. Personal Ministries, Elder Carl Davis as the leader, 
Sister Sharon Palmer, Sister Claudia Diaz, Sister Druslyn Hines. Personal Ministry Secretary, Sister Druslyn Hines. Sabbath School, Sister Beverly Sutherland Head, Stephen Barrett, Janet DeHue, Sharon Palmer, and Sister Mordrina Honore. Um, and of course, the, uh, the other departments, we don't have a whole lot of young people, so we'll work on that as necessary. Um, Sabbath School Secretary, Ava Ward, and Olivia Ward. Family Life, Sister Anne-Marie Wellington, Sister Michelle Givens. Women's Ministry, Sister Gloria Mangaroo Head, Sister Carolyn Hanna, Diane Tatum, Cynthia Dixon, Rosie Hawes, Suzette Walker. Men's Ministry, Elder Melford Walker, Head, Ian Henry, Roydell Wedderburn, Leon Hanna. Uh, AY, Sister Claudia Diaz, Leader, Nadia Henry, Alex Henry, Lynn Coy Jathan, Jennifer Duvert, Carly, and uh, we needed we need another young person in there. Uh, Ava and Olivia Ward, Raymond Bennett, Aliyah Ali. AY sponsors, we have two of them, Sister Madrina Honore, Sister Maureen Gordon. Community Services, Cynthia Dixon, Leader, Evelyn, Evelyn Gordon, Michael Mangaroo, Leon Hanna, Medley Hines, Rupert Rowe, Maureen Gordon, Cheryl Morgan, George Foster, Pathfinders, Dr. Gerson Diaz, and of course, he's also filling in with the uh, Master Guide program as well. Finance Committee, Anne-Marie Wellington, leader, assisted by Sister Rosalind Ward, Ian Henry, Diane Edward, Michael Mangaroo, Donetta Wright. Security Officer, Brother Howard Sutherland, Gavin Ward, Michael Mangaroo, Leon Hanna, Calvin Kane. Prayer Ministry, of the Melford Walker, Carl Davis, Rosie Hawes, Alveda Bennett, Maureen um, Okay, Maureen Gordon, I guess that should be the last name is is printed here wrong. Um Madrina Honore, Suli Adley, Ellen Walters. Vivian Walters, Prison Ministry, Rosie Hawes, Dr. David McCalla, uh, Stewardship Investment, Sister Diane Edwards, Michael Mangaroo, um, Disability Ministry, Sister Sharon Palmer, Minister of Music, Sister Anne Marie Wellington, Madrina Honore, Ushers and Greeters, Sister Rosie Hawes, Leader, Maureen Gordon, Michelle Givens, Cheryl Morgan, Sharon Palmer, Carl Davis, Alex Henry, Linkoy Jathan. Health and Temperance, Sister Suzette Walker, Suzette Stewart Smith, Maureen Gordon, Gloria Mangaroo, Nadia Henry, Myrtle Saunders, Ivelyn Gordon, Joy Henry, Edline Major, and Lorna Bramwell. Audiovisual, Brother Wayne Wellington, Sarah Thompson, Ryan Wedderburn, Raymond Bennett, and Sister Myrtle Saunders. Education Secretary, Brother Stephen Barrett, Dr. David McCullough, Sister Beverly Sutherland. Religious Liberty, Sister Rosalind Ward, and Carl Davis. Hospitality, Elder Carl Davis, Leader, Maureen Gordon, Rosie Hawes, Myrtle Saunders, Gloria Mangaroo, Cynthia Dixon, Cheryl Morgan, and Druslyn Hines. Those are the names. As was said, a, a copy of this will be posted in the, uh, in the, in the foyer. 
you have a week to peruse the uh, report. If there's a question, Pastor Honore is the chairperson of the, of the committee. Sister Maureen Gordon was the secretary of the committee. So if you have a question, then you, you, can, you can either ask now for the report to be sent back to the committee, or you can look at it during the week. You have one week to do that. Contact the, uh, the secretary or the pastor and let them know that you have a problem with the list of names. Thank you very much. I thought I read everything I had. Oh, deaconesses, I'm sorry. Sister Cheryl Morgan, leader. Sister Cynthia Dixon, Sister Gloria Mangaroo, Sister Rosie Hawes, Sister Norma Henry, Sister Michelle Givens, Sister Suzette Walker, Sister Diane Tatum, Sister Madeline Tatum. Those are the names of the deaconesses. Okay, just uh, look at the names, look at the report, and if you have a problem, just, uh, like I said, either recommend now that it be sent back to the committee or sometime during the week contact the pastor or the secretary who is Sister Maureen Gordon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elder Hannah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. May God bless our service this morning. Stories of the Bible. Zacchaeus. This is Zacchaeus. Stories hey, of the Bible. Was a tax collector Zacchaeus. And very rich. Tax this collectors is were hated because hey many people was thought they were liars and, and very rich. Hey. Tax collectors were hated because the many people lived in thought Jericho. they were liars and, one day, and cheaters. Jesus was hey. passing through Jericho. What's going on? Zacchaeus what lived in Jericho, what? and one day Zacchaeus Jesus wanted to see who Jesus Jericho. was. What's going on? Jesus is here. Hey, me. Zacchaeus hey, wanted to see who but Jesus was, but he was too was. short to see above the crowd. Mm -hmm. hey, oh, that's it. Hey, watch where so you're he going. ran ahead to but a he was place too where short he knew to Jesus see above the come. crowd. He climbed to oh, a sycamore tree. So, so he, he ran ahead Jesus. to a place where when he knew Jesus, Jesus came would to come. that place, he climbed he up to and a saw the tree in the so tree. He could see Jesus. Oh, hey there, when Jesus so, came to me? that place, yeah, you. he looked up he and saw him. Zacchaeus in the tree. Zacchaeus, oh, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. He said to him, Zacchaeus came down Hurry and come down. He was I must stay have at Jesus your house in his today. house. Oh, all, all the right. people saw this and began came to complain. Down quickly. He was pleased to have Jesus Look at the kind in his of house. Man Jesus all the people with. saw this Zacchaeus and began to complain. But Zacchaeus said Look to at Jesus, the kind of man Jesus I will give half with. my money Zacchaeus to the poor. Is a sinner. If I have cheated anyone, but Zacchaeus I will said pay to Jesus, that person back I will give four times my more. money to the Jesus poor. Jesus said, if I have Salvation cheated anyone, has come to I will this pay house that person today. back what? four times Jesus more. This man truly Jesus belongs said, to the family of Salvation Abraham. Salvation has come to the son this of man today. What? Came to find this lost man truly belongs to the family of Abraham. The son of man came to find lost people and save them. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Please stand for scripture reading. Today's scripture is taken from Luke 2, verse 25 through 35. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. So he came by the Spirit to, into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his, arm, in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. 
Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a word will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Thank you. Please remain standing and join us as we sing. and sunny on the outside. I still pray that God is blessing us on the inside and we are happy and warm to praise God. As we come to pray this morning, I'm asking everyone to get in the attitude of prayer. Those of you who can kneel, those who feel comfortable standing, sitting, 
but get your heart ready because that's what is important to God. So let's get in the attitude of prayer. This morning, kind Father, you are wonderful. We are here to praise you and to give you thanks. It is such a blessing to know, Lord, that you are pouring out your Holy Spirit upon us as this moment. Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be thy name. We are so thankful for all the blessing you have bestowed upon us. We are thankful for the pains you have relieved from those who are suffering. The sick, Lord, you know them more than we do. You have healed them in the past. There is nothing you cannot do. And Lord, if it is that you are not about to heal us from the sickness that Satan cast upon us because of sin, we ask that our hearts will be so ready that we'll be ready to live with you. Because someday soon you'll be coming back to claim your people to live with you. We thank you, Lord, for Sister Hannah, who made it out this morning. We ask that you'll continue to bless her, that her healing will progress. We place Brother Utterly and his family in your hand this morning. We ask for blessing. We ask for strength. We ask for your Holy Spirit to fill him. And we ask for comfort and peace. Fill him with joy, Lord. Joy just to know that he has another day to praise you. For Sister Palmer and her family, Lord, she had lost loved one. Her mom is sick. Lord, you know the burden that puts on our heart. But this morning, Lord, lift that burden. You are able to lift that burden, Lord. So be with her. Be with her family. Strengthen them, Lord. Give them that peace that passes understanding. And Lord, the last time I had taken my book out and I was put Kyle's name in it, it was for a different reason. Lord, he was going off to college and I want to add all these kids to my prayer book and it's still there. Kyle, I was looking at your name this morning. And Lord, we are just here to give you praise because you are good. Amen. You brought Amen. him out this morning. Amen. So we are here to thank you, God. And all the other names of the young people in my book, Lord, I present them to you this morning. I ask for you to strengthen them, not only physically, Lord, but spiritually so that they can hold on to you and never let go. This morning, Lord, there are many among us who are suffering, physically suffering. But Lord, we know that you are able to relieve the pain and the suffering. There are those who are mental anguish, Lord. Heal their mental anguish. And there are some of us who are spiritually anguish. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Move with us, Lord. Send the blessing upon us this moment. And Lord, for those who are leading out today, I pray that you will go before us and that people will not see us, Lord, but they will see you standing here pleading with them for their soul salvation. I pray for the musician. Lord, this morning, give him a very special blessing, God. Help him to serve you and to love you more than anything else in the world. Father, I present to you the praise team. Oh, God, may their words, their songs, the music touch each heart here today. May each heart be drawn to you, God. And Father, everyone that take part may we not see them but you 
I present, O oh Lord, all those who are visiting with us. There's a reason God brought you in here this morning. And that reason is to bless you and to shower you with his love. Lord, may their hearts be filled, Lord, as they sit this morning and listen to your word. Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask that you will bless each young person that is here this morning. I ask you that you'll bless Sister and Brother Walters and that you've brought them here one more day to praise you. This morning, I want to present Dr. Makalo to you, before you. Lord, he's your servant. And this morning, he's going to present the word one more time. Lord, may you just fill his mouth with the words that you want him to speak. Because the words you fill his mouth with, Lord, will the ones that bring healing and peace, contentment, will bring wisdom in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, we're here just to praise you. Give us that desire to honor you and to love you. Give us that desire to worship you, God, and to bring us closer to you. Oh, Heavenly Father, bring that peace this morning. Near to the heart of God, there is peace and contentment. Love us more than we can ever imagine. I know it's your love for us. So bless us, Lord. Remember all those who are wandering away from you. Bring them back, Lord Jesus. Bring them back to you. We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Bless those who are in the sound room, Lord, with a very special blessing. We don't see them, but they add a lot to the service. So bless them this morning. We thank you so much, Lord, for hearing us and answering our prayer. With thanksgiving and with praises and with honor, Lord, we bow before you this morning. Bless us, we pray, to this end. In Jesus' name, amen. joining us today. We are very happy to see you here and we are very blessed to be able to connect with you happy through Sabbath social media. Church. First, online giving. CandleSDA.Church and HomesteadFL.AdventistChurch.org are the two and websites so where you can go and give your offerings Adventist and your time. Secondly, remember to share the sermon with a friend. Right now is a good time to text a friend or share the link to someone so they can come David and watch the service with us. The We're very happy to have you here. Hope you enjoy your sermon. And ACS See you soon. soon. The staff soon learned that he had recently been released from prison and was saving money to rent an apartment. At the time, he was living in a tent near a creek just outside of the town and had no way to cook food. So David chose items that were ready to eat out of the package. Realizing that more was needed, a volunteer invited him back the next day to pick up cooking items. The volunteer went shopping for items they did not already have at the center, and soon 
David received a small cook stove, fuel, a can opener, and cookware when he returned. ACS continues to assist David with food when he runs low and prays for his safety and God's continued presence. Further giving food, cooking gear, dental care, clothing, after school tutoring, or English language skills, your ACS offering paves a path, for, a path forward for somebody in need. Ellen G. White sh shared in her ministry of healing, the Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for, for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he bade them, follow me. Let us remember um, that the ministry of Adventist Community Services helps us reach our communities and bring Jesus' goodwill to people. Join us and become the practical hands and feet of God in our world. So deacons, please come forward. Please remember that the first offering is going to go up to our 2030 project, which is to support all the special needs of our local church. The second time the offering comes around, it will be to collect the regular tithe and offering. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity you've given us to be in your presence. Thank you for blessing us and help us to be able to bless others and to further the work of the church with everything that you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. privilege is mine today to introduce our speaker. I guess some may think it's a benefit to have been a long-standing member of the church so you can introduce everybody. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I met Dr. McCalla in, I believe it was 19... 80, 79, 80, somewhere in there. Um, he, you know, we sort of, we sort of kind of grew up together almost. Uh, our kids kind of grew up together. Um, at the time, he was serving as the, uh, as, as the choir director at Miami Temple. 
And he served since then, served the church in many capacities. Um, he's a PK, a lifelong educator, uh, served the Miami-Dade public school system in various capacities, uh, uh, classroom teacher and uh, assistant principal, principal, and he served two other districts as well. Um, he's been you know, in the position of the first elder here at our church for the past 12 months. And he's spoken here on several occasions during that 12 month period. God has sent us messages by him and today I'm sure is gonna be no exception as he brings us God's message for this hour. As Sister Saunders said in the prayer, it is our hope that the words God will give him will be just what we need. So let's each listen for the message that God sends to us individually and apply it to our lives as Elder David McCalla brings us God's message for the hour. Before he does so, however, our Praise team is going to come and bring us uh, music for meditation. Let's. Sister Donetta. Sister Donetta will bring us a song of meditation. So let's give her undivided attention. Afterwards, the next voice you will hear will be that of our first elder, Dr. David McCalla. Happy Sabbath, church. I do hope this song will bless your hearts. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten. You are faced with circumstances you just can't go through. Right now it seems there's no way out and you're going under. But God's proven time and time again, He'll take care of you. And he'll do it again for you. He'll do it again. If you just take a look at where you are now and where you have been, hasn't he always come through?
You may not know how, you may not know pain, but you do it again. You may not know how, you may not know why. Sabbath in our prayer meeting, but uh, God has blessed me, my family, just like you. We have a lot of situations that come up. I am the caregiver for my 99-year-old mother who uh, used to uh, raise me. I uh, think she stayed home for about eight years and homeschooled me. That's not very popular anymore. Most of our mothers go back to work within a month or two or nine months. My mother dedicated her life to me and to my development, taught me to read at three and music to play because she was an organist choir director for the NC University in Jamaica and et cetera and her local church, Kencott and North Street. And she poured Elder Walker all that music into me. Three, four years old, she used to tell me all the times I used to come home, move my hands at three or four years old on the bed. Whatever I saw being done on the Kencott church, I'd come home while she was fi fixing music. But the, the thing is that uh, parents, you never know what are your kids are going to absorb and how their lives are going to be shaped by what you and I do. And I want to thank publicly the Hannah. My first two children, especially my oldest, Sister Hannah raised her pretty much for the first five or six years. She was the surrogate mother, the actual mother to my daughter, Dawn Charmaine Roslyn McCallum. We were, her mother and myself, we were working the, what, 16-hour days. And Sister Hannah sacrificed a lot of time and not even your Bible. So let's test your memory again. The Lord's Prayer and also the, uh, the Shepherd's Psalm, Psalm 23. Together, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. He maketh me to lie down in 
He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me by the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord's Prayer. O Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And Heavenly Father, as we continue, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us. I pray that you will forgive us of all of our sins. I pray that you will cleanse us from all of our sins this morning. I pray that you will empower us, all of us, including me and everybody else that's a, a spiritual leader here in this church. I pray that you will edify us, you will instruct us and teach us. But most of all, you will sanctify us through your truth. Thy word is truth. And may your word come out strong. May your word be alive. And may your word be penetrating today. As we share the worship and the study of the word, I pray in Jesus' name, let the congregation say, Amen. all right, uh, I didn't hear too many of you reciting the Lord's Prayer. I, like, I hope you haven't forgotten it. But uh, some of these things, remember, Mrs. White has said that there is coming soon a time when we won't have our cell phone, we won't have this, but we will have this. So we want to encourage everybody to this. Memorize. Remember Psalm 1. I always say that to some of the young people. Blessed is the man that walketh not in counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful public teachers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he what? Meditate, study, understand. Go over and over and over and memorize in your head what the truths of God say. There, there is no reason for us to rely on our phones. There is no reason to rely on just reading because that aspect of it is not good enough. Our words, the word of God needs to be in our long-term memory because when the time comes, the Holy Spirit has to reach way back in the recesses of our mind to bring back to us a word that shall benefit somebody in your neighborhood. Maybe you'll have to preach to uh, or talk to President Biden. Who knows? The mayor of Dade County. And if you go in there and you don't have the word right here, what are you going to do? You're going to have to fiddle around. And we don't want that. You need to be able to deliver the word. And as you, you turn in your Bibles right now, salvation is come. Hallelujah is the topic. Salvation is come is the topic. Repeat after me, salvation is come. Again, together, salvation is come. One more time, salvation is come. Hallelujah. Say it again, hallelujah. Okay, now when I say salvation is come, anytime I want you to say hallelujah, so you got to make sure you're paying attention. Salvation is come. All right, pay attention. Salvation has come. Hallelujah. All right, whenever it comes for the next couple of minutes, maybe 40 minutes, you got to pay attention because when I say salvation has come, you got to say what? Hallelujah. All right, now pay attention. Now, notice if you go to your Bibles, the scripture read so ably, and I want to thank Brother Torrance for the music. Sometimes we, even me, we overlook the musicians and the contributors to the service. The Holy Spirit coming in, people that can come and deliver Holy Spirit music and Holy Spirit readings and Holy Spirit words. We have to thank God and thank them that God is using them because it takes special prayer and special dedication to do it. Guess what? You can't just play notes and you can't just talk. 
you, in God's church. You can do it outside, but to be able to reach people's heart is important that you have the Holy Spirit to do so. So whenever we have our young people and all other people contribute, I want to thank the tech team. If you notice today, when you go by, there are young set, younger than Norwood. They, guess what? They're there because they're taking care of the microphone and all of the things that we're doing. Make sure as you leave, you let them know that you are thankful that they allow God to use them today so that you receive a blessing. Luke number Luke chapter 2, if you have your cell phones and you have your Bibles, it's 1215. I want to get down at 10 minutes to 1. Everybody say amen. amen. All right, now, notice now you need your Bible. I'm going to give you a whole bunch of scriptures. Salvation has come. You're not with me. Salvation has come. Now, if you miss some of these scriptures, you can see the tech team because we're going to be giving many of them, and I'm going to go very fast because I want to be done in about 40 minutes. Salvation has come. All right. Now, notice that uh, chapter 2, this story you should know is well known, and it's sometimes recited on this, this type of time of year. That uh, Simeon, a prophet of the Lord, was going up and down, and he used to come into the church to pray. And if you notice in chapter uh, 2, verse 25, it talks about a man in Jerusalem, and that same man was just and devout, the Bible says in the 25th uh, verse, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. Salvation is come, and the Holy Ghost was on him. Salvation is come. Now and then it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. And if you go up to uh, verse uh, 22. You'll notice of that same chapter, when the days of her purification were done according to the law, notice that the custom of the law, as it says, and this other verse says, as the custom of the law, which they knew, guess what, at the end of 22, they brought the child Jesus to present him to the what? You're not with me. They took the child Jesus to the church to present him to the law, to be blessed, to be uh, prayed for. Just like we do. We don't baptize children here as Seventh-day Adventists. We do not believe in, in sprinkling. We believe that our baptism should be by immersion of people who have decided, who understand who God is, and it will dedicate and have dedicated their lives to him. That's what Seventh-day Adventists believe. And those of you who need to know, go in the Bible and if you go down a couple of chapters talking about John at the River Jordan. And he said that when Jesus was baptized and he baptized him, Jesus was put down into the water. And then he was brought up out of the water. So the water had, be, had to be enough for him to get down under the water. So Seventh-day Adventists believe in the literal interpretation of the Bible. And guess what? The next chapter, I mean, verse says after 27, 28, I'm going to read for you. Then took he up into his arms. Then took he, Simeon, took him up in Simeon's arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. Verse 30 is the theme that we're going to talk about in another 25 minutes. Then verse 20, 30 says, For my eyes have seen thy salvation. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. He was praying to the Lord and thanking the Lord that he had lived so long to be able to see the Savior of the word. Salvation is come what? Hallelujah. Salvation is come in the form of that babe that was born in swaddling clothes in that manger. That babe that uh, uh, came down, the divine Lord, the Emmanuel, the Lord, and the word was with God, and word was God. The same was in the beginning with, the, with God. All things, John says, were made by him, and there was not anything made that was made. That verse 14 of the first chapter of John says in verse 14, that same word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
And that same word came as the form of a little babe. And that little babe, that day was brought to the sanctuary, was brought to the church so that that babe could be blessed and that baby could be dedicated to the job that he had, which is to bring salvation to the world. Salvation has come. Now, I want you to notice why that is important. Those of you who need your Bible, you have to remember that when war was waged in heaven, in Revelation it tells us there was war in heaven, chapter 12, I believe. And as war broke out in perfect heaven, the devil and his angels, because they lost that war, and I'm telling you right now, the devil is losing the war. You couldn't think that that's true. If you listen to the news, Ukraine and Russia are killing each other and babies are dying. People are smashed together. People are being destroyed. There is pain. There is destruction. But I want to tell you, the devil can make all the havoc he wants. But my Jesus is in charge. There is, as Peter says, an imitation lion. And Peter puts it interesting. He says, the devil comes about as a roaring lion, not the real lion. The lion of Judah was that little babe that came down from the annals of time through the, the lineage of, of Judah, the one of the sons of, uh, of Jacob. And two, as God had predicted through prophecy, that that babe would be the salvation of the world. Salvation has come. Hallelujah. All right, now notice that the devil was cast out into the earth. And Mr. Devil, who thought he was going to be Mr. Big, my fact, the Bible talks him and calls him the prince of this world. Notice the prince is not the king. It's interesting. The Bible calls the devil the prince. Guess what? The prince has to get along to uh, pri uh, King Charles when he was prince. The Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, had to give him his money, had to tell him where, where, to, where to go had to tell him where to live because that prince has to obey the king. Can you say amen? And the king is the lion of Judah, our king, the salvation of the world. Salvation has come. All right, now remember now, he decided and his angels. We're going down to the Garden of Eden and you know the story whereby one man sin came into the world, Paul says, and death by sin. Therefore, we all have sinned and come short. I want to tell us right now, if you're sitting here thinking that you're not a sinner, you're wrong. All men have sinned. Some of us got these secret sins. We sneak around, and some of our friends don't know, but God knows. Sometimes we go to work, and we lie on people. God knows. And sometimes we're supposed to work eight hours, and we work six and sneak out the back door, God knows. Sometimes you're supposed to be where you're supposed to be, and you're not. And you say, I was there. You may have been there and passed through, but you're not there. Nobody says amen. Preacher coming down hard this morning. Ain't seen nothing yet if the Holy Spirit tells me to say what I'm supposed to say. Now, the prophecies... And you remember that big prophecy in, in, in Genesis 3.15 when Adam and Eve uh, fell, particularly Eve, he called them together and had a council of war and he said, you know what, we had a war and you keep trying to continue it, Mr. Devil. I'm going to tell you right now that you're going to crawl on the belly just like you, you used to fly, but you're coming down all the way to the earth and you're going to bow down every time you move around. You're going to bow down to the king of kings. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to have to wait 6,000 plus years, even 2,000 years, because guess what? I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to smash you, and I'm going to make sure you don't rise again. I'm telling you, Mr. Devil, guess what? You're going to wait 2,000 years. Salvation is come. And when I bring my salvation, it's going to come down and nobody can question it. Not even you. I will be declared the just God. I will be declared a mighty God. I'll be declared a loving God. You said I'm not, but I'm going to prove it. 
and then you will have nothing to say, so then I will snuff you up. Mr. Depp, how do I know? Throughout this Bible, we're going to walk through very quickly in about 10 minutes. The prophecies from that point, God throughout his word kept reminding mankind kind, that salvation is come. Salvation is come. Wake up out there because guess what? This is the time of year Satan is trying to confuse us and have counterfeit because Jesus was not born in December. He was born in the spring because the shepherds don't shepherd in winter time. Only a couple people following me. What does the devil done? We're going to spend a little time on that. Every time God has the truth, the devil brings something that's not true. He came and he said, all right, you can worship any day of the week. God said, no, there's a day that I've rested and I've hallowed and I've made it holy. You cannot make something holy that you didn't do make holy. Only I that's holy can make something holy. And therefore, Mr. Devil, he has been trying from that time. To twist God's word. Seven days become the first day. And you know what he's done? Salvation has come. He's twisted the meaning of Christmas. He has twisted the meaning of Christmas. Christmas is Christ worship. Christ mass, they used to call it. Christ, 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 what the devil has done. Money, money, money. Christ is a reason for the season. Can you say amen? amen. Salvation has come. Yeah. Now, if you have your Bibles, and I assume you don't, so I'm going to make you follow the word. Can you say amen? amen? Tech people are going to help me out. Salvation has come and throughout the scriptures. I'm just going to give you a couple of scriptures. God predicted from the Garden of Eden that salvation is going to come. He's going to send his son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten what? Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. And Paul in Romans 5 says very clearly, God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were our natural lying selves, when we were unnatural, doing things we're not supposed to do, stealing, committing murder, thinking in our hearts what we want to kill somebody, Jesus said, it's just as well as you take a knife and stab him. Guess what? God's law is the perfect law. God's law is something that we cannot do on our own, but praise the Lord, God says, just rely on me. I'll make you right. I'll make you right. I'll forgive your sins. And I'll make you righteous by the blood of, my, of the Lamb that I shed on Calvary. Now, Amos 8, if you have your Bibles. Amos 8, chapter 8, verses 9, 9, 10, 11. Amos 8, chapter 8, verses 9, 10, 11. Amos, the book Amos, written by the prophet that was a sheep herder, shepherd. A very lowly guy with not much uh, non-education. Amos chapter 8. And verses 9, 10, 11. Read with me. And 9 says, And it shall come to... I don't hear, but just Elder Walker. Come on, read. If you don't have your Bible, I put it very conveniently for you up on the screen. Read it. And it shall what? In that day, said the Lord God, that I will do what? Cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Remember that? And I, God, will turn your feast into and all your songs into and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and upon every and I will at, and at the all right. Now, salvation is come. Salvation has come. Notice that the Amos predicted it. 
Isaiah chapter 35, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 35, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah chapter 35, 5 and 6. Isaiah 35, 5 and 6. Salvation is come. All right. Then read with me. Then the eyes of the Lord shall blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be. Yes, and then shall the lame man do what? Leap as an heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and the streams in the desert. Notice that salvation has come. All right, Isaiah, who was a prophet that was sawed in half. And if you go to Hebrews 11, you realize that King Manasseh, evil, despotic king, was so cruel, he took the man of God. And Isaiah was such a force in Israel those days. He took the man of God and took a saw and cut the man in half with no anesthetic. He cut the man in half while he was alive. He cut the man in half even though he had so much pain, he had to scream out, that prophet is who just wrote those words. And the dumb shall sing. Notice Isaiah 40 chapter verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Salvation is come. Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 5. Isaiah 40, 1 to 5. Are you with me? All right, say amen. amen. And he also said, comfort ye with me. Comfort ye, comfort ye my, saith the Lord. All right. Speak ye what? If you're not with me, speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is what? Accomplished. That her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Salvation is come. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Remember that every valley, Dr. Martin Luther King used to quote this scripture, every valley together shall be, and every mountain and hill, and he, the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough place is what? Plain. And the glory of the Lord, you're not with me, shall be what? Revealed. And all flesh shall see together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. And Simeon right then was the first one to recognize that salvation is come. And guess what? When he held that baby in his arms, he knew some of these scriptures by heart. That God had promised a Messiah. God had promised a governor. God had promised, like Isaiah said in 9, 6, that we are going to have a governor. We're going to have a mighty God, an everlasting father. I am prince of peace. That's what Isaiah also said. And he predicted. And, and, and brother prophet Simeon knew those scriptures and knew those prophecies. Haggai chapter 2 verses 6 and 7. Haggai chapter 2 verses 6 and 7. Haggai tra chapter 2 verses 6 and 7. Read with me. For thus saith the Lord of yet once a little while and I will what? Shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory said the Lord salvation has come salvation has come is what Simeon was saying to those people in church that day this little baby is salvation and it's come right now Lord thank you for keeping me alive to see the main course of the salvific plan. The main course was this baby that was born in, F in, in Bethlehem. That same baby that was the, the divine wrapping of humanity. That same baby, that's what Mrs. White calls divinity, was flashing through humanity is what she may, puts it as. And guess what? That was true because certain times that human son of man would speak a word, and Lazarus came forth. Malachi 3, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
Malachi 3, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Malachi 3, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Read with me. It says what? Behold, I will send my what? Messenger, and he shall what? Prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall what? And even the of the covenant whom ye what? Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Salvation is come. Salvation is come. But who may abide the day of his coming together? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and the fuller's soul. And he shall sift as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Salvation has come. Then shall the offering of Judah and righteousness and all the purification and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. As in the days of old, as in former years. Salvation has come. Hallelujah. All right, now see if Simeon knew these scriptures. And sometimes we hear those words at Christmas time. But because we are so saturated with secularism, we can't recognize the word of God. Can you say amen? We can't recognize that for unto us a child is born. A, 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 a son is given. The chastisement of our, our peace is on, upon him. And let me tell you, brethren, when we walk into Walmart and we hear that song from Messiah, for unto us a child is born. You should be able to say that's from Isaiah. That's from the word of God. And that particular son who is being referred to is the son of God and the son of man. And therefore, when we shop, we should say praise the Lord. Salvation is come. Praise the Lord. All right, Micah 5.2. Micah 5.2, a contemporary of Isaiah. Micah 5.2. Micah 5.2. Micah 5, 2. All right. Micah 5, 2. Salvation is come. All right. Now, Micah was one of the prophets, as I said, in Israel. Matthew 2, verse 6. Matthew 2, verse 6. Matthew 2, verse 6, as we move along because of time. Matthew 2, verse 6. Notice that these words are the fulfillment of, 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 uh, of what uh, Simeon was talking about. He didn't even realize what was done. And thou Bethlehem is what my Bible says in Matthew 2, verse 6, number 5. I'm going to start with Matthew 2, verse 5. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And if you want to know who was saying that, it was Micah the prophet who, who predicted and put these words down that sometimes we casually sing in this particular season. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a what? You don't even know the name. From out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Oh boy, you're not paying attention to the season. Who is the reason for the season? Who is the reason for the season? Now notice, we have gone through God's word. Salvation has come. And I got 10 more minutes. Notice now, that's the truth. God sent his son, as we just said, to save the world. Why? Because from the foundation before creation, God knew ahead of time that man was going to fall. So he created the salvific plan that we understand that linchpin was Jesus Christ himself. And Jesus came down because he's son of God to pay the penalty on the cross for us. But he had to live like one of us. We all are formed in our mother's room. We all are wonderfully made is what the psalmist says. We all are children of our parents biologically. And because of that, he came into the womb of Mary. And that's what people sing about. And they don't even know that the Savior of the world came. 
And you remember what happened? He, had, he was born in the stable. And notice that when the time came, he got eight days after he was born, he was taken, he was circumcised, is what that chapter is talking about in Luke. And then we get the story of Simon, Simeon. So notice, that's the truth. That is the truth. And guess what? Satan is not over. He's just gotten started. He cannot stand that he's losing. It's in the fourth quarter, and he's two touchdowns behind. He doesn't know, but he knows that the end game is coming, and he will not give up. He will not give up. So what does he do all throughout time? He threw the Israelites a bone. I don't have time to talk about it, but you know the history. Seesaw history. Sometimes they served the Lord. Sometimes they didn't. I remember Sister Donetti's song, one of my favorite songs. It takes everything to serve the Lord. It takes your hand, your heart, and your head. It takes everything because you got to surrender to God, and the Israelites weren't surrendered all the time. Just like us, we come to church on Sabbath morning. We are right. Most of the time, if we bring our Bible, sometimes we're just sitting there catatonically. The, the words are coming in and going out. Our minds are not visualizing like Isaiah said. My eyes were lifted up, and I saw the Holy One standing there in the heaven. I saw him sitting up there in heaven. You got to visualize there's a God. You got to feel there's a God like the wind. You got to understand that there's a God that brought you here today. There's a God that's keeping you running, the blood running up and down in your vein. There's a God that's pre preventing you from being crashed together when you walk down the road and drive down the road. That God, that sustainer God came here. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. Notice what I said, is come. I didn't say has come. One of the reasons why as Seventh-day Adventists, we are now called back because the devil has said, no, you're not created. No, you came from a monkey. No, you came for a corpus of our cell. No, you didn't, you didn't come. But my Bible says the truth, that by the word of the Lord were the heavens what? Made. And all that in them is by the breath of his mouth. He commanded and it did what? Stood fast. He said and it was done. That's my God. But he's in public school and all over the world. What's the word? There is no God that has created. Devil, number one, messing up the truth. Second thing, he messed up the Sabbath. We just covered that. And he will not give up. Now notice, all throughout time, he has come down and notice he's using quickly. I have 10 more minutes. Follow me carefully. What he has decided to do, he's going to create sophistry. And the Christmas season is the most prolific and the most uh, wealthy and the most uh, uh, money economically time of the year. The very time that we should be experiencing and thinking about what Jesus has done for us. What does the devil do? Create a pseudo-Christ. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. You don't believe it. Salvation has come. When your sins are forgiven, you got to feel different. When you've been messing up in the past, you got to feel different. When your conscience is killing you, when Jesus straightens you out and he cleanses that conscience, you got to say, praise the Lord. You got to say, praise the Lord, when you come in this holy place and you know you don't deserve to sit in these pews. You don't deserve to even be in the lobby. But because of the grace of Jesus, because he shed his blood, because he came as a child in Bethlehem, because he came and he shouted his uh, divine uh, as being in, in, in uh, got into humanity. Because of that, you and I have a right to the tree of life. Can you say amen? And the devil says, hey, we're going to pay for that. We're going to pay some money. We're going to make money. And we're going to do a whole lot of stuff. Now, instead of it being Christ, the reason for the season, in seven minutes, follow me, December 25, I'm just going to give you some of the connections. 
to see as seven-day Adventists. Because guess what? In Revelation 14, we have that three angels message. And by the end, I want you to be able to tell me at least the first angels message. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, unto every nation, tongue, and people. Sing with a loud voice. Do what? Fear God. Guess what? He's the creator God. Fear God because he's the one keeping me alive right now. Fear God that he has redeemed my soul and cleaned up my conscience. Fear God and give glory to him for his hour of his judgment is come. I don't like the NIV uh, that says has come. I don't like those other translations because they make it a done deal. It is not a done deal. In Daniel 7 and 8, we, he has prophesied that that judgment time, just like when in, in Daniel 7, it says that the, 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 unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be what? Ah, again, on to 2,300 days, the Bible through Daniel says what? All right, some people not paying attention. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. And I want to tell you now that judgment as Seventh-day Adventists, we have a biblical interpretation that's unique in this world. You know why? Because we are part of God's remnant movement. How do we know that? Go back to Revelation 14 and verse 12. What does it say? Here is the patience of what? You're not with me. Here is the patience of what? Here are they that do what? Keep the commandments, all of them, of God and do what? Have the faith and testimony of Jesus and Revelation 19.10 brings it home. And it says, the testimony of Jesus is what? Spirit of what? Ah, oh, you're not with me. The testimony of Jesus, Revelation 19.10 says, what? That the testimony and faith of Jesus is the what? I don't hear it. That the faith of Jesus is the what? And if you study Mrs. White's life, you have to say it. Read it for yourself. Don't take it for, uh, from me. Don't take it from the pastor. Don't take it from the church elder Sabbath school. Read her biography. The most prolific woman author in the whole world of all time. Guess what? Only God can do that. This lady had a third grade education. Dropped out of school. And the great and the small read her books throughout the world. Can you say salvation has come? And therefore, you and I have a responsibility to take the Bible truth as we understand it to every word, all of our neighbors and all of our friends, our co-workers. Let them know salvation has come. So December 25 is a false thing from the devil. That was set up by Constantine who messed with the Sabbath and the Roman Catholic Church codified it in A.D. 40, 440. They said, we're going to have a mass, a Christ mass, but we're going to put it nine or uh, six, seven months away from the truth, and we're going to put it in December, and there is no biblical foundation for December being the birth of Christ. First thing, Christmas gifts, that goes back to the 15th century. When they took the Bible concept of the wise men, you remember they came into the stable and they brought what? Gifts. What are the gifts? Gold, frankincense, and what? Myrrh. So guess what the devil said? We're going to bring gifts in the 19th century. Notice in the 1700s, people began giving gifts to family members. Where it is in the Bible, it doesn't say that. In North America, St. Nicholas appears in December 6th on his feast day under the influence of the poem. You know what the poem was. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse, to the role of Santa Claus as a source of Christmas gifts. The Bible doesn't say anything about that. Salvation has come. And it is. Santa Claus. Santa Claus attire imitated 
the traditional dress of a bishop. You know what a bishop is? A minister. When they said we're going to have Christ mass, they had to have somebody officiating. And the bishop and the priest had to always, if you remember the sanctuary service, they had to be dressed. And they had to have certain jewels, the onyx stone and the urim and the thummim. And one would say, God says yes. The other one, he would say, God says no. Guess what? The devil says, I'm going to imitate him. And I, when we, we do this festival, for me, not for God. For me, we're going to dress like the bishop. We're going to dress like the minister. That is the true minister. I'm going to put you in the same color and the same attire. Santa Claus beard, Daniel 7 and 9, and ancient of days, if you remember that scripture, did sit, and the hair of his head was like pure wool, Daniel says, and his garment was white as snow. That, notice the, the switch, brethren, notice, and you got to instruct your neighbors and friends in a loving way. Notice that in God's system, it says that your sins are red and black. And his righteousness is white as snow. What is the difference? It's opposite. Notice that, that, that the devil says, I'm going to make uh, his beard white, imitating God the Father, ancient of days. And I'm going to make also him dress in red. It means the blood. The devil didn't shed no blood. Are you following me? Stay with me. I'm over time by two minutes. Next, Isaiah 1, 18, you should know the scripture. Though your sins be as scarlet, red, they shall be as wool, snow, white as snow. Though they be red, they shall be as wool, red like crimson. Notice God says, your sins are red. Now I'm going to make them white. Don't mix it up, devil, and don't mix it up, seven-day Adventists. Don't allow the devil to fool, uh, fool us. Notice that God's truth is opposite what the devil is truth is. And Revelation 17, chapter, uh, verses 3, 4, and 5, and if you go back to the 17th chapter there, you'll notice that it talks about a woman arrayed in red and purple. That woman represents a false church. That woman represents Babylon. The second angel, come out of her, Babylon, is what we should be preaching. And come out of her because you're going to participate in the judgment that's coming. Notice that Revelation 17 says, I, John, saw a woman sitting on a scarlet-covered beast. I saw John sitting, a woman sitting on a red-colored beast. Full of the names of blasphemy. Notice the blasphemy that he has changed the times and laws that Daniel said. He changed the Sabbath from the seventh day to the first day. He changed the state of the dead so that we would think there's purgatory. He's changed a lot of the, 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 the laws of God so that we'll be few fooled. He said, I am God. And I'm going to put my vicar here. There's my vicar that lives in Rome that says, I am God and I can forgive sin. Blasphemy. Notice that John says the names of blasphemy are not red colored beasts that a lady sitting on and that has seven heads and ten horns. And the woman, the Bible says, was arrayed in purple and scarlet. Salvation has come. Are you following me? Are you following me, church? Yes. All right. Christmas cards began in England in the 19th century. 1800. These people started. There is nothing in the Bible about Christmas cards. We spend so much money on that, thinking we're doing what we're supposed to do. Christ is the reason for the season. Salvation has come. Christmas trees came from the Egyptians way thousands of years. The Chinese the, and some of the Hebrews to scare away the devil. Can you believe that? Google it yourself. I got it from Google. Don't believe me. Go and listen to the historians. Christmas trees came, passed down from the Egyptians and Chinese. Notice that perilous times shall come. That's what Timothy said. Perilous times shall come. 
and men shall be lovers of their own selves and unholy, unthankful, and they are doing their own thing. They have Adam and, and Steve instead of Adam and Eve. They have also that Anna and Eve. They have all mixed up stuff. And all of that stuff has been listed in the Bible for us to pay attention to because we live in that time. Christmas pyramid from the 16th century, Western Germany came from. And Christmas tree, they merged because of these things and more. The Puritans of the old world and the new world opposed the celebration of Christmas. Let me tell you, brethren, the people who came to Premise Rock, they knew that this Christmas, the way we celebrate it, is not biblical. Can you say amen? There's nothing wrong with pointing out the Bible does not support these things. And so, praise the Lord, I hope that none of us, if we've been in it, we have to say, Lord, forgive me. Salvation has come. Then you tied Carol. I have to talk about that before I sit down. It's five to one. And I have five minutes to sit down. Predominantly from Norway. In tradition of the day of the day. You know that song that Nat King Cole? The first black mainline singer a person, black person with a television show in this country. You know this song? You should know it. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir and folks dressed up like Eskimo. That, that choir is a devil's choir. Let me tell you the, the word Yuletide. Remember coming from Norway. It says rituals to welcome the return of the sun. That the day of the dead, you will tell carols sung by a choir. It ain't, it shouldn't be a seven day Adventist choir. Can you say amen? Why are you getting weak? Salvation has come. All right. Mel Tormey, all of these, but guess what? We believe that there's coming a judgment. But it isn't just the Bible. Mrs. White, who is our prophet, as I said to you before. Put up on the screen before we go what the prophet of the Lord, our prophet, has said about observance of Christmas. One of these days we need a sy symposium on some of these things. But I challenge you, brethren, to dig deep. Adventists are supposed to be people of the book. That means we study the word of God. We memorize it. We know it. And if you don't know some of these things, the Lord has to help you and me to dig in and learn it. You can't learn it in a sermon in the morning. You got to be able to read it for yourself so that you can teach somebody. You know, when I was in the education building a bit, uh, business, we always used to tell students, you got to learn it so you can teach it. Because if you can teach it, you know it. And if you can teach it, you'll remember it. And if you can teach it, you'll have it down in your soul. And that's what we need as Seventh-day Adventists in the Kendall Church right now. We need to have a working knowledge of God's word. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of what? God. And if you don't have that word, you don't have faith. And if you don't have faith, you don't believe in God. Hebrews 11 says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder. You got to have faith that my God can heal you from cancer. You got to have faith when you kneel down at somebody's hospital bed and say, Lord, help my brother. Raise him up. You got to have faith and you got to have a connection with God. And that connection is connected by faith. By grace, uh, Paul says, ye are saved through what? Faith. You don't have enough faith in God, you're not going to be able to live for God. You don't have enough faith in God, you're not going to be able to stand up in the last days which we are. You're not going to be able to stand in perilous times when people are bullying and killing and destroying each other. You're going to say, hey, there is no God, but you've got to have faith because you know that my God is alive. Listen, that I serve a risen Savior. Can you say amen? He's in the world today, no matter what you say. I know that he's living because he lives where? Right in my heart. I've tested him like Malachi said. I've proved him. He's answered my prayer. And I want you to tell you, I know for a fact that God is who he is. 
When we sit down and we have faith, we can move mountains. Don't let me know that you don't believe what the scripture says. Try it for yourself. Test God. You got somebody sick in your house? Kneel down and pray. You got your kids wandering all over the place and won't acknowledge God? Kneel down and call their names. And you keep praying and you keep praying and you keep praying like my parents uh, prayed for me when I was out there. And I didn't care. Somebody was praying for me. Those saints in the church were praying for me. My parents were praying for me. Every time I would call, they would tell me. Every time I used to remember my name being called in worship. I want to tell you, brethren and friends, when you have put the word of God in your mind and in your heart, wherever you are, the Holy Spirit will be able to reach you because the investigative judgment like we talked about is going on. That somebody somewhere is going to run out of time. Somebody somewhere is going to run out of mercy. Somewhere somebody right now may not make it till tomorrow because God's mercy is going to be withdrawn. And if you don't make a decision today to serve him, you're not going to be up there where you think you want to be, Mrs. White said. Review and Herald, December 9, 1884. The holiday season is fast approaching with this interchange of gifts. And old and young are intently studying. Read it with me. Salvation has come. You're not with me. Salvation has come. Is come. Salvation is come. The holiday season fast approaching. Read with me. And the exchange of gifts and old and young, read, I don't hear you, are intently what? Studying what they can what? Go on, it is pleasant, however small, from those we love. It is an assurance that we are not forgotten and seems to bind us to them a little closer. Go on, she says, brethren and sisters. I would remind you of our heavenly what? Lest you should be unmindful of his claims. Read with me. Will he not be pleased if we show that we have not forgotten him? How do we show we've not forgotten him? Jesus, the Prince of Life, read, gave all to bring salvation. Salvation is come. To bring salvation within our reach. Oh, matchless love. He left his what? Royal throne is high command and stoop to share our poverty and shame that we might be exalted to share his riches and his throne. His glorious perfection called forth the admiration of the angelic host. Read with me. Yet he, their adored commander, I don't hear you, came down to a world sunken in sin that he might give us a perfect example in his life. Step by step, read, he had descended to the deepest humiliation that he might reach what? Fallen. Guilty men and lift them up to become sons of God. Read with me. For us he submitted to insult and for us he denied himself at what? He suffered even unto death that he might give us eternal life. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. And I want you to know the culmination of that salvation is yet to come. That's why I say it's come. It isn't has come. It's coming like a train down the track. It's coming. You're either ready for it or you're not. It's coming to pick you up or pass you by. The train's coming and you can't do anything about it. The train is coming. You need a ticket. You need a ticket. You need to be able to get on that train. And guess what? When uh, in Revelation 12, 10, it's not up on the screen. If you got your Bible, I want you to read it. Turn it out there to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter what? 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, as we close out, because it's 102. See, Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. Read it with me. I mean, verse 10. Read it with me. And it, the Bible says, and I heard what? Read it with me. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Revelation chapter 12, what verse? 
Salvation is come. Let's read together. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come what salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which caused accuse them before our God. Day and night, verse 11, and they, the saints, overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Twelve, therefore, the Bible says, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And 13, when the dragon saw that he was cast on the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And you know the persecution is subtle. I just gave you some examples that the devil ain't coming to a seven-day Adventist straight on. He's messing up our minds during this season and other things. He's messing up our minds to think we have to run to Walmart. And run and get gifts and gifts. I remember when I was it, 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 doing a lot of stuff I shouldn't be doing. I, I had secretaries and teachers and all that. I'd end up going to Walmart and blowing four or five hundred dollars for meaningless, stupid little gifts to give to each one and put in their mailbox. Lord, help me. Guess what? God has forgiven me. But I can tell you right now, Mrs. White just says, don't do that. That $500 should have come into the coffers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And she says that money we waste on ourselves should be spent to build up the work, physically pay for the sanctuary, and guess what? Pay for missionaries across the world who are delivering the word of God. Let me tell you, brethren, there is a time and a reckoning. And Revelation 19.1 is what I'm going to close with. Revelation 19.1. What Revelation chapter what? Chapter 19, verse what? And read with me Revelation 19, verse 1. King James says, I really like it. I don't like to use the other ones. Chapter 19, verse 1. Read with me. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he has judged the great church which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again the saints said, verse 3, Hallelujah! And the church that is false, the smoke rose up forever and ever because the Lord has come. Salvation has come. And how the, how that point, whoever is unjust is going to be unjust still. Revelation says it in chapter 22. Whoever is filthy and sinful, let him to remain sinful. Whoever is righteous by accepting the righteousness of Christ, let him remain righteous. Whoever is holy at that time, that the, 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 the declaration is going to be made. Remain holy. If you're holy at that point, no turning back. You have your chance right now, brethren and sisters, to get our lives right. Get our lives right through the Holy Spirit. Last Sabbath, we were trying to, to do what we could, which is pray, 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 ask for the Holy Spirit. Our job is to ask for it because it's free. That Holy Spirit, when we surrender the Holy Spirit, will be able to stand in the judgment bar of God and be declared righteous through his particular righteousness that we have accepted by faith. And guess what? Even after that, some of us were disappointed. That after the Holy Spirit came in to some of us and received the blessing, some people were making fun in this church. Some people were making light of the Holy Spirit. And so again, I say to you, 
2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be kept cleansed. Whoever is unjust, let him remain just. Uh, unjust. Whoever is filthy, let him remain filthy. Whoever is righteous, let him remain righteous. Whoever is holy, let him remain holy. When Jesus comes, he's coming like Paul said. The Lord himself, the high priest, Hebrew said, is coming. And he's coming. And the, when he descends with a great shout and the trump of God, when Gabriel sounds that trumpet, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those who will remain shall be caught up, the Bible says, into the air, and they're going to be a great reunion, a camp meeting of the air, before there's a camp meeting in heaven. That camp meeting is going to be universal. All eyes shall see it. And when that helicopter goes up with the saints, goes up towards the heavenly Canaan, where are we going to sit down at the welcome table? We're going to sing and never get tired. We're going to shout and never get tired because by the grace of God, we have been accepted as his children, not because what we have done for Kendall Church. We have officers that we're trying to, to select that we hope and pray the Holy Spirit will get into all of us and the work will move forward in 2024 in this place. And until we deliver it, to let Holy Spirit come in, nothing's going to happen. If I be lifted up, the Bible says, I will draw all men. I will bring all these people back in these empty pews. I will. Not me. Not the pastor. Not any of you. If I will, that's what Jesus says, I will. As the praise team comes up, I just want you as they come up and get ready to sing. I want you to pray just right where you are that the Holy Spirit will touch your heart. Don't talk about anybody else. Don't worry about the praise team, what they're wearing, what they're singing. Nothing! Pay attention to yourself. Because Sunday we found out that people are worrying about what the mics do. Worrying about whether it squeaks or doesn't. Praise the Lord, that ain't what we're here for. We're here to take care of our own soul salvation. Don't worry about the technology people. God has them on the control. Don't worry about your neighbor sitting next to you. God has that person on the control. That person has some time to dedicate and consecrate themselves. Or God is going to say, it is done. This is why I said when he was on the cross. The Bible says he declared it is finished and there was an earthquake and the veil was rent from top to bottom. But she says in great controversy, chapter 40, somewhere I don't remember the page, 600 and something. She says, when that pronouncement is made, let him uh, remain unjust if he's still unjust. When I close his probation, he's going to rise up from being a lawyer and stand up and say, it is done. The last time he said that salvation plan was finished. But this time he's going to say, it's done. We're done for if we have not accepted Jesus Christ. So as the praise team sings, think about it before we close the service. Bow your head and offer a silent prayer that where you are, God will impress upon your mind to give your heart to him first. You will surrender your heart to him every day, every minute, every hour, so you will not be caught up on secular things like Christmas season that is not filled with the reason for the season. Pray to God as I pray, Heavenly Father, keep our minds and our hearts. You will have told us what your gospel is. Everlasting to everlasting. Love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, the fruit of your Holy Spirit, come and live in each heart, remain with each one of us. I pray until you come, keep us faithful until the end, in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we all stand, please, and join us as we sing, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come.
let us all stand and exercise your vocal cords. <laughs> convicted you during this hour or is convicting you at any time. We welcome